Well, I'm here with Chris Richards. Uh, he's made a, a, some impactful appearances in his last couple of games for Palace. How have you found it, by the way, getting in the first team? I've enjoyed it. You know, mm. I've always dreamt of playing in the Prem, and uh, you know, the last two games against some big teams, we got mm. some good results. So it was it was a good week. One of them was against Man United, which was a bit disappointing. <laughs> uh, we won't talk about that. But how are you finding life in the UK in general? I'm enjoying it. You know, mm. of course, already speaking English was uh, you know, really <laughs> nice for me to come here. And uh, I've always heard about London, about how nice of a city it was. So being able to live here, it's it's been really great. What are the kind of glaring differences between like living in the States and, and, and the UK? Um, definitely driving on the other side of the road, <laughs> <laughs> the size of the roads, of course, as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I come from a, a small place back home, so I'd say here you can kind of be your own person. And mm. uh, I think I really enjoy that part about the UK. Well, well just elaborating on that, well, did you find that being from a small place in, in America is easy to, easy to be judged and maybe some things are frowned upon more than others? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think where I came from was very traditional and it was kind of like I was um, almost forced to be a person that I necessarily wasn't. And so I think being able to, you know, to come to a place like like London and being able to play for a team like Palace with a lot of guys that look like me, I think it's been very uh, eye opening for me. How difficult is that? I mean, because I'm from quite a, a mixed background in terms of where I was from. Mm -hmm. uh, the environment was very mixed. I'm mixed race myself like yourself. Mm -hmm. How is that when you, you're almost feel that you're living in a place where you need to conform yeah I, it almost felt like i was having a bit of an identity crisis growing up i mean i was you know maybe i'd have one other black kid playing on my team but for the most part i was the only kid that looked like me and um you know mm. going to school i was only the black kid that played that played football and so it was um definitely a bit of a struggle growing up and like i said i think the first time seeing people that looked like me was probably when i moved to germany um mm. so it was uh it was definitely eye-opening moving to Europe and realizing that you know it's not just it's not just you know people who have money that play that play football. It's people of all you know, races and um, ethnic backgrounds. Mm. Did you get much support from people uh, where when you're living in America, even when you've been here, if you've experienced any type of racism? What's the support been like? Yeah, you know, growing up uh, in Alabama, it was you know not such a not such an easy easy place to grow up when you know you're you're black or of mixed race and. Um, you know, like I said, growing up, I was pretty much the only black kid on my team. And so, mm. you know, we'd go to some tournaments and, you know, I'd hear stuff that I shouldn't have heard, but at a young age, you wow. just try to kind of try to brush it off. Um, but, you know, after the fact, I always ended up having support from the people around me because, you know, they understood that it's, no, it wasn't right. And no matter how old you are, it'll never be something mm. that, uh, that you should tolerate. Um, so I think the people around me really helped with that. Is that where well, we can't see them now because it's a bit too chilly to kind of get your, your clothes <laughs> off. Um, but. I've seen a bit of content with you, with prominent black figures uh, throughout your life you've looked up as inspirational, mm -hmm. um, as tattoos. Yeah. Is that where that comes from, that stems from? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, my dad's always taught me that, you know, uh, you know the best thing uh, a black man can do is to, to be well educated. And so I feel like I've done my research on the people who have gotten tattooed on my body. And, um, you know, they, they really stand for a lot of things I want to stand for as well. Mm. We've gone into a, a world where social media kind of is a, it's at the, the beginning and the end of everything. Yeah. Uh, it's involved in everything. It's part of our lives now, ingrained in our lives. What's been social, what's social media to you? I think it's a way to, to connect with people. You know, mm. I, uh, I moved away from home at a young age. And so just kind of being able to, to see not just my friends, but you know, family members that I haven't seen in forever, just kind of seeing their lives and you know, how they've progressed and milestones in their lives. I think social media is uh, you know, a, good, a good aspect of being able to to follow the people that you know you that you can't see every day mm. and also there's there's a lot of good stuff on social media but there's mm. also you get the hate especially after performances yeah how do you deal with that because i'll be like the, the latter end of my career it started coming in but it wasn't as prominent as now so mm. how do you deal with the haters and stuff like that yeah it's tough you know you uh i think everybody yeah i mean i think everybody <laughs> hates seeing uh hates seeing negative comments about yourself but mm. uh you know, I think it's a bit harder for my family seeing the negative comments because, you know, they they know that I'm trying my best um, mm. and some some days you're not going to have your like a perfect game. And so I just try to brush it off as much as possible. You know, um, at the end of the day, I'm still doing something that I love and uh, mm. I'm not going to let their negative comments kind of deflate me. What, what, what do you do to keep yourself like mentally and physically like in tip top condition? Because obviously this is a high pressure sport you're in. Football's it's not an easy sport. Yeah, it's enjoyable. It's fun. But there are a lot of kind of pressure um, around it in terms of expectations from people and fans, expectations from yourself. Yeah. How do you deal with that? 
you know, I, I hide myself to, or I hold myself to a high regard, but also mm -hmm. I, I like to give myself slack sometimes, or I like to be, I like to be honest with myself. You know, if I feel mm -hmm. like I gave 100%, then that's all I can ask for myself. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, like I said, I'm not going to always be perfect, but I know I have a bad game. I try to learn from it, whether it's you not know, watching film or just, you know, trying different things in training. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's the only way to, to get better and to improve yourself. In terms of inspirations and players that you look to to, to help you improve ga your game and stuff, who have those people been? Yeah, of course, you know, hearing from the gaffer a lot, you know, just on things I could do better, that always helps. Mm -hmm. um, also, just like I said, just kind of being brutally honest with myself and watching clips, you know. Uh, that's important. Yeah, right? it really is. I mean, as much as, you know, sometimes you're in film uh, after a tough game and you know you've had a bad action, you're like, oh, like, <laughs> you're I, waiting re for it. I really don't want to see this, but, you know, it's, it's the best way to learn. Hmm. So outside of football, who kind of has been big, big inspirations for yourself and helping you get to the position you're in now? Yeah, I mean, of course, my parents, you know, they, they sacrificed everything for me and mm -hmm. uh, not so easy time, not so easy place. And so um, you know, they've always been an inspiration for me to, to keep going. But also, you know, my siblings, uh, you know, they look like me as well. They grew up in the same place I grew up. And mm -hmm. so I think for me, being able to do something that nobody from where I'm from has done, uh, I think I just want to... I want to inspire them, you know, I want to keep them going. And uh, I think that starts a lot with the kind of the trajectory that my parents put me on. So if we can fast forward five, maybe 10 years. Yeah. What's it look like? What's it looking like for you, man? <laughs> yeah, let's hope I'm at the top of my game, you know, one of the best center halves in the world. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully a good World Cup as well back mm. home. Uh, but yeah, like I said, hopefully just, you know, becoming one of the, the best center backs in the world. That's, mm. that's my goal. Good, listen, that's the best way to finish, man. I love that. Thank it's a you. target. Ten years, we'll go back to this clip. <laughs> Take care, man. Thank Good luck. You Thank you very much.